Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. For today's video, I wanna cover Tesla's Master Plan Part 3 paper that was just released yesterday. A lot of new information. I wanna summarize some of the key takeaways and also dig into some of the detail that I think is super interesting and helpful for the coming months and decades as it pertains to Tesla. And I say decades because it's, <laughs> it's a very long, it's a very long timeline of a document. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Neil P, thank you so much for, uh, for supporting the channel. If you'd like to do the same, you can click on join right below this video you get access to exclusive content on fridays and access to our private discord so here's the document it's official master plan part three sustainable energy for all of earth of course tesla had an investor day on march 1st that gave us a, a big picture idea of what they're going into now it's in a paper with a bunch of backing data and so on and so forth 39 pages long Here's a table of contents, but I'm not going to go through all 39. I'm just going to give you a quick summary and also dig into some of the detail that I find very, very interesting. So really the key takeaway here is that Tesla thinks with $10 trillion of manufacturing investment, they can get to a fully sustainable economy end to end with solar, wind, geothermal, all kinds of stuff. And it's going to take about half the energy required versus today's investments. And the other key takeaway is that they believe there's going to be, uh, it's going to be cheaper to get to that than continuing the current trend that we're going to going through rather with fossil fuels and whatever else is going on. Uh, this is really highlighted by this chart that they shared and sort of the key takeaway here, it's hard to read, but I'll just uh, simplify it for you. This left part, it means how much energy we're taking out of the ground or from wherever, you know, the air and the sun and, and the sky and whatever. So it's about 133 petawatt hours, which is a gigantic amount of fossil fuels. So this is natural gas, uh, oil, so on and so forth, petroleum, and 31.5 from renewable biomass. And then this is sort of what we actually put to work. So we take out, say, 167 petawatt hours, which is a ridiculous amount, and then we use 59 petawatt hours of that for useful work. So to actually do the things, move the cars, uh, power our homes, power our, I don't know, fridge, uh, you know, our air conditioning units, so on and so forth. And then 105 petawatt hours of that goes to waste heat. Like for example, when you power your gas car and it's just kind of the engine sitting there and it's, you know, it's moving, but it's also warming up and it's getting really, really hot. That's that wasted heat from the gasoline. So the key takeaway here is that 64% of the energy that we extract from anywhere is wasted through heat. 64% of the energy we take out is wasted through heat. A very easy analogy here. So say you find $300 on the ground and you immediately light fire to $200 of it. That's exactly what's happening with our current economy, <laughs> with our energy economy globally. Mind-blowing, right? And so... What Tesla's trying to do, and with others, I'm guessing, with, through this partnership, is they want to really get it to this fully renewable one that's a lot less wasteful through changing transportation, energy storage, energy generation, and heat pumps. They have a lot of information around heat pumps, which I find really, really fascinating. And so what they think under this new economy this is going to look like is that we're going to go from that 167 petawatt hours drawing out of the whatever to 99.4 through sustainable electricity and 14% through... or 14 petawatt hours and 99 petawatt hours in sustainable electricity and biomass. And then the end result is going to give us 72 petawatt hours of useful work and heat compared to the 50 some odd from the current economy. 30 petawatt hours of curtained renewables, which is basically excess energy that gets stored in batteries, and then 10 petawatt hours turn into waste heat. So really the, the big takeaway here is that 10% of the of the waste under this sort of new economy that Tesla wants to build goes through waste, wasted heat versus the fossil fuel current economy that's 64% that's being wasted. So instead of wasting 64% of the energy, we waste 10%, which is a six times efficiency improvement. And so what my head goes to is like, who cares about the climate at this point? Why wouldn't we <laughs> switch over? It seems extremely wasteful and very, very expensive to do our current thing. Why not do the new thing, which seems to be a lot more efficient? And it's, don't worry, you know, I, of course, I care about the climate, but I think the care, the key thing here is that the economics of it seem to be super lined up for it to make sense. And that's really my biggest takeaway. Now, let's get into some of the detail that I found very, very interesting on this video. Um, and But before, before we do that, I would love it if you throw me a like. Uh, it helps YouTube algorithm show this to more people. Thank you so much. So the key thing, the key piece of detail that I want to go through is that we have some information now around how Tesla's thinking about the efficiency of the electric cars that they sell. 
So we have passenger cars, light truck vans, and class A trucks. And the really key thing I want to bring your eyes to in this chart, which is really the first time we've seen this, is that now we have some sort of efficiency or mouse, mouse per gallon equivalent for what Tesla thinks the light truck van segment is going to be like once they start selling cars into that segment. And so what they're saying is like, hey, the gas truck or the gas van right now is getting about 17 to 18 miles per gallon. The electric vehicle equivalent is going to get about 75 miles per gallon equivalent versus that gas car. So now what's really interesting, though, is that now we have an estimate-ish for what the Cybertruck efficiency is going to be once Tesla unveils, actually starts delivering that product. And so very quick example, if we take a, an average per gallon cost of 350, probably conservative, given a lot of trucks run diesel, uh, but it say it's 350 per gallon. And uh, each say the average uh, travel distance for a, a driver is about 12,000 miles per year. The equivalent cyber truck with those efficiency numbers we went through would allow somebody to save $10,000 on fuel alone over five years, or which is equivalent to 170 bucks per month. So I just want to put that data set out there because now we have some data that's backing that sort of math. And, and also, if you take that efficiency number and you think about, okay, so uh, Tesla said they want to get about 500 miles of range on a cyber truck based on those efficiency numbers that equals to about a 220 kilowatt hour battery pack for the cyber truck again just using those rough numbers but i do want to highlight that this is likely an average for the entire segment tesla will likely be about 10 percent better but it gives us an idea of where the efficiency numbers are going to be for the truck which is very very helpful it's the first time we've seen that talking about the truck we just released our new newsletter this week. Uh, if you want to sign up for that, farzamespahi.substack.com. I have a link for that in the description below. Uh, check it out if you're interested. The other thing that was uh, really talked about a lot on this presentation is heat pumps. And if, <laughs> it seems like Tesla is super obsessed with heat pumps as of late, which I think tells us uh, some things about what they're thinking about here in the coming uh, quarters and years, potentially. Essentially, a heat pump is a more efficient way of generating heat or taking away heat. And so the way they've shown this is, a Tesla has shown this on this paper, is like, hey, a heat pump is so much more efficient than a gas furnace, so much so that you're going to be three times more efficient per unit of energy with a heat pump versus a gas furnace. And one other thing to keep in mind is that heat pumps are currently used in Tesla cars today for the sort of the air con, right? The, the air conditioning unit in, in the car. And, and Tesla and Elon Musk have been talking about this heat pump for a little while now. It's becoming louder and louder. And now it's in a sort of paper. It's like, hey, check it out. <laughs> There's a heat pump. And this is how important it is to move us to a sustainable economy. They talked about it at the Investor Day as well on March 1st. And so what my sort of takeaway from this is, is that don't be surprised if Tesla unveils their own at some point, maybe not this year, maybe not next year. But at some point, if they really view it as a, as a key sort of thing to move the economy forward towards this much more efficient, much, much better economy, especially when it comes to not wasting any money. I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla starts getting into the heat pump game, either through some sort of air con unit for homes or just selling them as one off pieces to whoever wants to use them for the different applications. It does seem like it's lining up exactly to how they're thinking about the future of the economy. So I would not be surprised if that happens. Now, the super juicy details that came out of this thing uh, is in the next few slides. And I really, I think it really gives us a really good idea of how Tesla is thinking about where to take the company next and what are the things they're gonna be focusing on from a vehicle perspective specifically. Uh, if you don't wanna support the channel real quick, I do have links for, for merch in the description below. You can follow that to my website and I also have a coupon for Athletic Greens, which is a, uh, a supplement that I use every single morning. Uh, and uh, you get some free travel packs and vitamin D with that as well. I love that product. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to, you don't have to. It's so completely up to you. So here's a chart that was listed in Master Plan Part 3 paper. You have the vehicle types, you have the compact, midsize, commercial passenger vans, large sedans, SUVs and trucks, bus, short range, heavy truck, long range, heavy truck, and then the total. And what's really interesting is that Tesla's like, hey, we have an equivalent for the midsize and the 3Y. We have an equivalent for the large sedans, SUVs and trucks and the SX and the Cybertruck. We have a short range, heavy truck equivalent in the semi-light and the semi-heavy for the heavy truck. But for the compact car, to be determined, commercial passenger vans to be determined, and bus to be determined. 
So you tell me what that means. <laughs> we also have some pack sizes that they're estimating for really the, the, the average of that segment. I'm going to guess again, like the cyber truck, they have the, the pack sizes. You can see that for the cyber truck here, they're listing a hundred, but I'm guessing that's super, super conservative. So I wouldn't put too much thought into these kilowatt hour numbers. You can see the compact they're saying 53, but potentially it's just for the segment average. It could be way less than that or way more, who knows? But then we also have vehicle sales. What, what Tesla is projecting out to be the sales for the entire compact segment globally, midsize, commercial, so on and so forth, up to 89 million per year, and about a 1.4 billion unit fleet that's out there just chilling, right? They're just, just, just driving around the entire globe, has about 1.4 total units of compact, midsize, bus, so on and so forth, and then the terawatt hour equivalent of the batteries for every single one of these. So here are my takeaways from this chart. There's a lot of information, so let me break it down for you. So it seems quite obvious that Tesla is working on a compact car, a van, and a bus. Now, the compact car we know because Elon's been talking about it quite a bit. The van, we have an idea because of the investor day slide where they had that thing covered up. But the bus seems to me like it's new, seems to me like it's obvious, especially if they're doing the semi. And so this seems like a very loose way of saying Tesla's working on a bus. We'll see. We'll see, though. Uh, you, you tell me. Bus, to be determined. <laughs> Very interesting piece of information there. Now, the next thing I want to cover is during this chart, in this chart, you also have the vehicle sales and you have the vehicle type and the Tesla equivalent. So we can do a very simple math exercise to understand what percentage of the total each one of these segments are and how long it will take to turn the entire global fleet into, say, a uh, electric fleet if 100% of the sales from each one of the segments were electric. So... The 42, the 24, the 10 million units for each one of these totals to 89 million, which it totals to this number right here. All these numbers are in million. You have the global fleet. But what's interesting here is that the compact segment is making up about 47%. The midsize segment is making up 27%, 11%, 10%, so on and so forth. And then it will take 16 years to turn this entire 686 million fleet of compacts at 42 million per year, 16 years, 16 years, 17 years. And then the bus and the trucks are much smaller. And I'm guessing it's because these are becoming a lot more common. So it's not because they break down every five years. It's because there's a lot of demand for these things. So that's I just want to give some sort of insight into that. The total fleet will take about 16 years to turn based on these numbers. However, the really big takeaway here is I want you to focus on it, this percentage of total. So what percentage of the total fleet is compact, mid-sized commercial passenger vans based on how many they sell each year. And if we take those percentage of totals and we put it against Tesla's goal of 2030 of their production of 20 million by 2030, forget about the demand, let's talk about production, 20 million per year in uh, 2030, then we can get a really good idea, I believe, of how Tesla's thinking about the mass, max production of each one of these segments uh, as it pertains to their vehicle sales. And so based on these numbers, if we take the proportion of the percentage of total for each one of the segments, Tesla thinks that they're going to do about 9.4 million in the compact, 2.2 million in the commercial, 0.2 million in the short range heavy truck, so on and so forth. Okay. And this is a pretty, pretty big tell, I think, and on how Tesla's thinking about production. Let me highlight some of the key ones that I think are very important. So based on that chart, Tesla's thinking if if it lines up with how the market is today from a from a segment perspective, this implies about 2 million Cybertrucks at max capacity and 5.5 million Model 3s and Ys. And so the key question becomes, how in the hell, <laughs> how in the hell is Tesla going to be able to do that when they're doing about 2 million of these and zero of these? And additionally, if you keep this in mind, that if in 2023, Tesla's only, say, 37% of the way there, for the three and why, because they're doing about 2 million and they want to do 5.5 million total. If this sort of breakdown holds true up to 20 million, really the only way to get there is affordability. And so affordability for Model 3 and Y and Cybertruck will be absolutely crucial if this is really how the segmentation is going to turn out for Tesla with their 20 million by 2030 goal. So I think this is a very helpful bit of information and we'll get confirmation of this if Model 3 and Y and Cybertruck continue to have price decreases over time or they are very price competitive and affordable 
versus the rest of the fleet, which Elon Musk has talked about quite often as of late, that affordability is really the biggest thing that Tesla is going to go towards by passing on as many savings as humanly possible. We'll get confirmation of this plan if the Model 3 and Y continue to be af as affordable as possible and as price competitive as possible versus its peers, its competition. We also have some data set around Tesla saying they're thinking about 2 million vans between the passenger and commercial segments. Again, if this breakdown holds true, that van could be the platform for RoboTaxi, much bigger form factor. You can fit things in there. And if it drives itself, you don't need a you know, a wheel and pedal, you have a ton of room in there, you can customize the interior for having a party, working, whatever else, right? It, it maximizes the chances of really tailoring the experience to whatever use case there is for that robo taxi. So that's a very interesting bit of information as well. If again, if this holds true, expect about 2 million of them potentially. And then of course, the 10 million compact cars, which if you really think about it, if it's going to be, say, around $25,000 and with the IRA tax credit in the U.S., it could get it down to sub 20000 And if this thing can drive itself and have the same performance of a Tesla, God knows how many they can sell. <laughs> and there are some rumors around Tesla building about 4, millions of, uh, um, 4 million units of capacity in Mexico, Shanghai, and Berlin. Some rumors coming out of uh, the, the Tesla war for that specific thing. So that's almost halfway there to that target already based on their plans. So is that really aligning? And there's another piece of information that Elon Musk has mentioned in the past, that the compact car, they're expecting it to be bigger than all other Tesla products combined. Now, of course, that's going to be based on today's product line. But based on the numbers we just went through, it could be also about their future product lines in 2030. So most importantly, most importantly, what do you think? What do you think about all this data. What do you think about Master Plan Part Three? What do you think about the pathway that you know, sort of Tesla is going through right now, and how they're approaching their goals? I would love to hear your comments below. And really, really, my point of my videos is to really create conversation. I don't know if I'm right. I don't know anything, <laughs> but I really love digging into information and bringing it to you. So you know, maybe it's it's more helpful, it's more informative. But I really want to turn our comment sections into a great place to have discussions. So if you want to be part of that community, feel free to subscribe, and I would really appreciate that if you do. Thank you so much. So let me know what you think. That's really what it comes down to. A lot of information. Let me know what you think, and I hope this was informative and helpful. Helpful. Let's see if I can say the word right, and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.